call the um, call to order the regular meeting of the Carabelle City Commission. It's Thursday, November the 5th, 6 p.m. And uh, I'd like to ask Mr. Commissioner Cal Allen to please say the prayer and then we'll do the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Please stand. Our God and Father in heaven, we're so grateful that you have blessed us with this beautiful city and that we have this opportunity to come together and partnership and dealing with things that pertain to our life and health and all the things that we must be concerned with. We ask your blessings upon us tonight, especially as we deliberate on the things that come before us that might be judged wisely, faithfully, and patiently, and that we might accomplish the most good for the most people in this lovely city. We ask your blessings also, Father, on one of our commissioners who recently lost a, a relative, a dear relative, and be with them and comfort them, and show them the path that, to lead their lives on. We're thankful for each and every one that's been here tonight. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Hello everybody, I'm Skip Frank of the Old Carabelle Hotel. Tonight I'm appearing uh, on behalf of the Carabelle Chamber of Commerce uh, on the subject of Holiday on the Harbor and Boat Parade of Lights. We're going to have uh, the best one this year, we hope, that we've ever had. There are going to be some changes and uh, just want everybody to know what's going on and hopefully get uh, as excited as we are. I'm the event chairman this year. That may not be the most exciting thing that you've ever heard. But uh, very importantly, the Chamber of Commerce organizes the event. We have three very important partners. Number one is the Waterfront Partnership uh, in Carabell Cares uh, in, the, in the person of Tamara Allen and, and some of her folks that we all you know, know very well. They are a local nonprofit. The CRA is Carabell Re-Renovation? Carabell Redevelopment, Redevelopment Agency. Agency. Um, they are um, going to be sponsoring the, the whole fireworks show this year. Um, that money comes from taxes that downtown businesses pay. No money that comes out of our own pockets unless you have a downtown business. Uh, and the third uh, partner is the TDC, our, our county tax, it's, uh, it's our tourist tax group that uh, uses money from lodging taxes, small percentage of lodging taxes. <clears throat> Again, you know, cost none of us in the county anything. What they do for us is the out-of-county advertising. So hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars can go toward Tallahassee and some of the important markets to get some people down for events like this. Where people are concerned, number one, not in any particular order, but number one on my list is Captain Rusty of Tobo US. He's parade marshal. He has been for 15 years that I know of, and probably longer than that. Does it? Uh, you know, just all you have to do is ask him if he'll do it. Yep, he'll you know he'll do it. No no trouble. Lisa Munson uh, from the Chamber of Commerce is our event coordinator. 
Lewis Christie of Christie's Cottage Living, one of our newer businesses downtown, is handling the vendors and the street area. Bo May, owner of Rio Carabel there on the main corner, the stage sound system. Carabel Cares of Steve Allen, uh, the stage, we will have a stage this year. And then Paul Marks and CPA will be doing the awards tabulation. Now, here's what's new and, and different this year. First of all, the event hours, 10 in the morning until 9 at night. So it's a, it's a full day event. Uh, the reason, biggest reason for that is we want to get some vendors, you know, to who are willing to travel a little bit of distance. And, uh, you know, for a two or three hour, you know, event, it's, it's not worth it. Uh, this will be all day long, basically, and, and hopefully it will be. We'll see. Next, the location. Events in this town typically take up the whole length of Marine Street. Well, there is a chance this December there'll be some challenges going on down at the far end of Marine Street because that whole area is going to be redone and nobody knows at this point just exactly when it'll start and when it'll finish and, you know, and that sort of thing. So we're only going to cover what amounts to two blocks. Starting from Highway 98 and Marine Street, going in one block, right to the white kitchen on the corner, and turn that corner and the one block of B Avenue, <clears throat> not going as far as the gas station, so nothing's blocked over there, but that one block and this one block with the white kitchen, the newly opened up, renovated CRA phones uh, business, I mean, hope, soon to be open, we hope, uh, which is uh, in, the, in the planning right now where Santa Claus himself will be. So he'll be the real one too, reindeers and everything. I promise. Well, you know, we hope. We um, we're trying to. Uh, the owner is willing, and if uh, if the condition of the building is okay, we'll actually have Santa Claus inside the door, inside the building. You know, surrounded by something white. You know, so it kind of looks like he's got snow around him. You know, things that we probably aren't going to actually have on the ground down here. Um, of course, parking signs, uh, porta potties, all those kind of things, off-duty, you know, police help will be taken care of. Now, where the, you know where the pharmacy is, right? Directly across Marine Street from the pharmacy is an open lot with a view of the river. That's where the stage will be set up. As you look at that lot to the left, up against the building, it was a barber shop, you know, years ago. Um, and it'll be this, the same stage that uh, Steve Allen has has put together for the Riverfront Festival and some other things. It's green steel materials, you know, it's a really nice stage. And uh, that will be used for, for you know, all of, the, all of the stage type events. Um, and family activities, we, we are working toward as much of a family orientation as we can possibly get uh, in, in the music, uh, food and, you know, and various products and things, awards and drawings. A lot of other family activities are being worked on right now, no reason to list them because we don't know if we're definitely going to have them. Then the boat parade, uh, some differences here also. Same 615 lineup, more or less, seven o'clock start, more or less, you know how these things go. The judges still plan to be at the pavilion like they have been in the past. That's good and clear and you know not a lot of, not a lot of, um, uh, distractions for the judges. And then the, uh, the boat parade itself will take the counterclockwise tour of the harbor like it normally does. As boats start to get down there toward where Sea Quarters is, Chuck Spicer and Debbie Jordan, uh, Chuck with, uh, with his mouth and his words and a microphone and Debbie singing and playing, will be basically entertaining and making, you know, making commentary on the boats for the crowds in the sea quarters area as they, you know, as they come by. And then uh, somewhere around the last boat getting to the judging stand or the last boat getting to sea quarters where the big crowd normally is, the fireworks display will go off. Then that's, that's not the end of it. Remember the vendors are open until nine o'clock back on Marine Street. So back on that stage on Marine Street, just as soon as Paul Markson can get the, the award envelopes put together and everything tabulated, the awards will be on that stage, you know, back over there where the vendors and, you know, and everything else is. And this whole route is 
more or less pretty walkable. So there should be minimum requirement for people to hop in cars and drive back and forth, you know, for a three or four block, uh, uh, you know, travel. Well, Merry Christmas, everybody, unless anybody has any questions. Uh, no, uh, Mr. Frank, thank you. Uh, I, does anyone here have questions? Uh, I may have missed it. The horrible, the good stand, I mean, the judging stand. Uh, on the pavilion. I'm uh, still on the pavilion. Yes, sir. That's good. That's the best place. Does anyone thank in you. the public have questions? Um, I just want to uh, make sure you uh, are coordinating with the Streets and Roads and Parks Department for any assistance you need, and then Chief Huntings for closing off of the street roadways and track control yes, through, through our administrator. We shall do it. Okay, and uh, we uh, see you're going to be sh showcasing and showing off our newly paved road there, Southeast Avenue B. It's really nice. Thank you. And now December the 3rd is another meeting, a uh, commission meeting, and that's uh, before your uh, festival, Harbor Boat Parade of Lights. Come back and tell us about it again, because okay. what's going to be happening. All right, thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, then uh, we'll have commissioner's reports. Uh, Commissioner Walden, do you have anything to report to us this evening? Chief Hunter was supposed to have me some uh, paperwork, but he didn't show up, so I could report you how they've been doing. Oh and, uh, I guess he's busy on vacation. So. No, he's busy. He's not on vacation. Okay. We know he's busy. Uh, he was supposed to have it for me, and I guess something came up. Um, but we'll, you'll certainly have it next Lord, month. You know, have a report for me, how many arrests they made, how many calls they had, but he got me and we didn't get it. Okay. Well, and, and I do, I do know that uh, the chief is busy right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, Commissioner Mathis, do you have anything nothing. for us? Uh, Commissioner Allen. Uh, just one thing, uh, very briefly. I attended a seminar at the EOC, and that's in my job as the city uh, is on person for the EOC. And uh, it was having to do with Florida's law on storms, um, and it has to do with an interfacing the United Command System, or Incident Command System. If you're familiar with that, it's a system that's been developed to deal with emergency operations or incidents of any kind, from hazmat to storms, earthquakes, uh, whatever. And it's a system where information comes down the chain, and it's the best way of dealing with things, so you're not going off this way or that way, you go right up the line. It's a very fine system. It's been implemented uh, many years ago, uh, to make things work better and also to create safety for everybody. So we're, they started off when they had a big uh, earthquake and, and they lost a thousand people, but 300 of them were volunteers that went in to help because they did not understand the rules of safety. So that's the incident command system, United Command. So the problem is that even though there's federal, state, and county governments and national governments, the, most of the things will happen in a local area and therefore it becomes the emergency operations center being the chief person uh, group to take care of that. And then we have to work with the municipalities, the law department, and public works and all of these things. So the idea was to keep all these people working cooperatively and sharing information and being accurate and safe. So that was what the seminar was about and uh, we will uh, be working with that with some of our leaders here in the city and, and the county together more often. But I just want to share it with you. It's a great, great meeting. Uh, we've been through it before, but it's an uh, update, and I think everybody needs to understand those principles so that you don't go uh, off and try to do something on your own, that it goes through the system. Thank you. Thank you. Um, was that an all day meeting? Uh, yes. Uh -huh. And uh, did anyone else from the city, from Caraville, come, or any? any I was the only one from Caraville. Uh, oh, no, no members of the public. <coughs> no. Uh, well, they're they're mostly people from public <coughs> and, uh, and uh, the, the law law people there. Well, I thank you for attending. I wasn't able to go. I was interested in it, uh, but I was, mm -hmm. had been out of town on training, so I need to be here. But thank you so much. We had to. Uh, we uh, through after the course, we were certified. So. Um, I have a report, and I just reviewed it with the attorney. 
uh, it's, it's quite extensive, so uh, a lot of things happened over this past month. I've met with a lot of people and been a lot of places, and uh, so y'all please listen up. I'll try to be as fast as I can, and, and just bear with me. Um, and then I, I'll provide a copy to the um, city clerk later if anyone has any questions or anything. Um, there, I, I'm just going to give you the headlines, so it, then, then we'll move forward. Small flood at City Hall. On September the 28th, it was discovered a large interior air conditioning unit had been left up, turned on for about a week. This uh, AC unit is used to cool the area for farm, where farm shares are uh, distributed. Uh, condensation from the unit is pumped out through pipelines underneath this building to sewer lines. And evidently these lines are, are clogged somehow or they're crushed from the building settling. And so condensation backed up and flooded back into that section of the building through a sink, like a kitchen sink that was in there that was the lowest part of the plumbing in there. And the sink, cabinetry, the farm shared distribution area, and hallway were flooded. Now considering the, the square footage of this building, it was a small flood, but if it had been in any of our houses, it would have been devastating. Water damage restoration and mold prevention had to be undertaken. The Seminole Fire and Water Restoration Company from Tallahassee conducted a cleanup over a four-day period. The final cost was $1,416, and that was the discounted rate from the original $1,574 for early payment. We paid pretty much the same day they sent the invoice, so we could, could get that uh, discount. Turn the page. <coughs> Um, now this is this is uh, item is for public information. There's a lot of uh, misunderstanding, and, and uh, Courtney or Keisha, correct me if I have some of my um, points wrong. Uh, but we want to make sure the public understands. A lot of people just don't understand how the employees are using credit cards, and uh, the employees were uh, using debit cards, but uh, very recently. They, they use the tra uh, debit cards for traveling and for equipment purchases, but uh, with the debit cards, the transactions were not able to be linked to the person make, uh, making the individual transaction. The debit was immediately de deducted from the city account. There was a uh, liability associated with loss or theft of a card, and there was really no opportunity for approval of transactions by the finance clerk or the administrator. So in essence, unauthorized or fraudulent debits could happen with, with the city ending, ending, ending up being responsible. So with the assistance of Centennial Bank, the finance clerk has instituted credit cards now for nine city employees, uh, and the credit, each credit card is in each individual's name. The credit cards are always kept in the possession of the finance clerk, locked away, and they're distributed to the individual only for travel or equipment purchase and each purchase must be approved, pre-approved, and uh, each credit card is accompanied with a monthly statement in the name of the individual on that card. Now, every transaction is linked to the individual user. The card user must produce a receipt for each transaction on the statement. And now this removes all the liability associated with using debit cards and places the credit card user responsible for the purchase. Uh, this new procedure is part of the recommended corrective action included on the city's last financial report uh, conducted by Mark Payne. Brownsville cleanup. On October the 14th, I met with Tamara Allen, Courtney, and Joe McGarrity, who's a consultant with the DEP Waste Cleanup Program, and there were two other gentlemen there. Uh, we discussed the, a small brownfield cleanup project next to and under the Sugar Shack area over there on the city property on Southeast Avenue C. And so it appears that the sugar shack will need to be removed to allow cleanup of the uh, contamination that's underneath, and Tamara's <coughs> going to report further on that part of it. But originally, the DEP's contamination removal plan included that this location would forever remain a public park as criteria for DEP funding. Now, this location will always have to remain in the possession of the city as part of that criteria. But per my request during the meeting, I requested the criteria wording be changed to general public use. So um, we can now use, we'll be able, once that grant funding is done and the cleanup is complete, we, we can use that location for a city building, a storage location, a parking lot, a park, or any other kind of public use. But uh, I, you know, I just didn't want it to be 
set aside just for one use when, when the city does not own a lot of property within the city limits, we may need it for something sometime. The Carabell Thompson Airport. Believe it or not, some folks living in the area don't know that Carabell owns and operates an airport. In fact, I met a lady last uh, Friday night that had no idea Carabell, Carabell, there was an airport in this area. On October 15th, I met with Mark Nobles. Uh, he's the airport manager. J Jacob Jacks, uh, an engineer for airports, Tim and Cindy Sullivan, and Courtney over at the airport. We discussed everything from completion of the fuel tank relocation project, which has been an ongoing project for about two years, and uh, current uh, grant awarded funding and deadlines for those grants, airport security, maintaining fuel inventory, daily quality testing of aircraft fuel, reinstituting the fuel pump credit card service, keypad entry on the security gate, and even who is responsible for public restroom cleanup at the airport. So um, Courtney uh, has got, uh, I don't know how to say it, ACOM, A-E-C-O-M engineers back on board uh, with the URS engineers. Uh, they're, they're back, she's had communications with them and uh, they presented uh, Courtney with a schedule for completion of the fuel tank relocation project which is gonna break ground around March the 3rd and we're gonna be hearing more about the airport in coming months. Okay, on the morning of October 16th, the Carabell Water Treatment Plant building on Highway 67 out by Patton Park was shot by gunfire. Uh, no one was injured. <coughs> Justin Messer reported the damage uh, was to a security light and a window and, and high up on the pump building. Uh, no damage was on the inside and within two hours of the incident, Mr. Russell, Russell Large with Anovia had reported the incident to the State Watch Office and to the uh, FDEP. The Carabell Police Department investigated the incident and filed a formal report. And uh, I think all of y'all will be glad to hear this one. Resolution to support banning in, uh, of, of fracking in Florida. Uh, at the November 3rd uh, meeting of the Franklin County Board of County Commissioners, they uh, adopted a resolution with rewording a little bit of the orig original resolution that had been presented to this board uh, the county reworded it to address local issues and why the county supports this ban. So during that meeting, I was informed by the same group that came here to see us. Uh, they uh, informed me that since the county has adopted this countywide resolution supporting the ban, that it won't be necessary for the city commission to address that issue again unless we specifically request to address the issue. So just wanted to let you all know that. Uh, on Tuesday, after discussions that we had in a water and sewer meeting on Monday uh, about subdivisions and water and sewer tap availability um, and whether or not they were in the city limits or not, uh, I discovered that the, uh, one particular subdivision that had been annexed into the city limits back in 2005, consisting of 46 acres with uh, uh, 47 residential lots had never been recorded as being in the city limits and city ad valorem tax never collected over the past 10 years. Now what is that? Amber, Amber alert. Oh, okay. Amber. It's everybody. All right. Sorry. That's okay. Everybody's phone is there. It was everybody. You know somebody named Amber? Uh, our, our deputy chief. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, we, uh, we um, on this subdivision, there had not been a 46 acres ad valorem tax, tax collected for the city and, and since 2005. Um, the city administrator, as soon as I let her know, she followed up immediately. I think within five minutes, correction is being made at the property appraiser's office who has re requested notification from us if we discover any other areas. And so I just want to uh, request the city clerk to please review all the subdiv subdivision locations that have been annexed into the city limits over the past 10, 15 years, just to make sure all those subdivisions and uh, locations that were annexed from our original city limits are, are being assessed with the city millage rate and just report back to us at the next month's meeting if you would. Thank you. So uh, yesterday, I met with uh, Captain Charlie Wood, uh, FWC Captain Charlie Wood and Mr. Rob Powis, and we discussed a handful of concerns regarding river-based and land-based uh, issues here in the Carabelle area, including the sunken, sunken vessels and at-risk vessels. 
and we opened a line of communication between the city and the FWC field office here in Carabell, and we look forward to working together in the future uh, with them. And Captain Wood did provide us with some insight on future FWC projects that are going to be conducted here in Franklin County over the next year, and we look forward to that. Okay. Still reading. Okay. I, uh, I've been working with uh, Courtney and uh, Bay Media and the 2K uh, group on the uh, new and state mandated CRA website. Florida statute uh, requires certain documents and information be posted on the CRA websites. Uh, descriptive list of completed projects and upcoming projects in the CRA district complete with photos will be included on that site. And I would, I would like to carry this concept uh, over to the city's new website where basic documents and updated information is readily made to the available to the public, uh, including I'd like to also uh, make sure that the police department uh, information is updated. There, they need to get some pictures and new names and phone number. And I, I want to also include a page uh, for airport information. Uh, we have, just like I said, we have that airport out there, and a lot of folks, you know, don't even know that we have it or that it's available to for public use and access uh, for pilots to come in. Uh, then over the next month or two, I, I, I want to get together with Keisha and work on, with her on, on any additions. And if any of you board members, uh, commissioners have, you know, requests or recommendations for the website, you know, please let Keisha know and, and we'll see what we can do. And I would also like to ask you all, and, and Commissioner Massey isn't here, I'm, I'm, we may have uh, the uh, city administrator email her. Uh, would, would you all be interested in, in posing for a photo, a group photo, to have uh, posted on the website? With, with, uh, if so, you know, I'll see if I can if I can arrange for that. I'll let you know. I'll let you know in advance. Would you? Okay. Yeah. All right. No would you, Mr. Commissioner Allen? Or. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> all right. Now, inventory of city vehicles. On uh, November 12th and 13th, Courtney and I are going to do an inventory of all city vehicles, whether they're, op they're operational or not. All the department supervisors have been notified. The resulting list will be, be compared with our current list of city insured vehicles. Photos, VIN numbers, and mileage is going to be recorded. Any scrap or useless vehicles will be advertised for sale of surplus inventory. So once it's determined which vehicles are in use, I am going to suggest that these vehicles be numbered with an uh, identification number. The numbers, then these identification numbers should then be recorded on all gas receipts when fueling city vehicles. And this includes all the fire trucks and police vehicles. And signatures should need, are supposed to be on each gas receipt and they need to be clearly legible. This is going to help the finance clerk when reconciling monthly invoices from the gas station. Now, if fuel is going into a private vehicle, sometimes that happens uh, for nearby business travel. Sometimes the city staff travels to Apalachicola or Tallahassee. Uh, so the reason, uh, you know, we want, we want to request that the reason for travel uh, is, is on the receipt and the make and model of the vehicle. This will assist in assuring each fuel, each, all the fuel that's purchased is for city use only. These, these procedures could lead to the eventual development of a spreadsheet including each vehicle identification number, amount of fuel used each month by each vehicle, and the monthly mileage on each vehicle. And then uh, just as this is for public record because a lot of folks don't understand uh, in the public, the city has an account at both gas stations, is that correct? And the gas station presents a monthly invoice to the city. And then this, this uh, invoice is reconciled with all the receipts turned in by the employees. And credit cards are not used for normal uh, fuel operation. Okay, thank you. Uh, I've requested staff to please notify all the commissioners when there's a prolonged and significant water outage and when water boiling is required. Sometimes there's a water out outage and, and your particular friends or constituents constituency will call you and, and you don't know anything about it. So it's important that we all know of, about these things. So now this evening, uh, the commissioners have before them a copy of the personnel policy for employees. And I'm, I would, I'm going to ask uh, that all the commissioners review this policy over the next month 
and bring your concerns and recommendations uh, to the city administrator and attorney. We did uh, do a, a resolution and some work on it uh, last uh, spring and summer, did a resolution last July on the, on the comp time and uh, sell back of vacation time. Uh, so there has been a fairly recent update, but you know, the new members of the board, I'd like you to review it. If you have any uh, concerns or additions, just uh, run it past the uh, uh, city administrator and the attorney to make sure it's legal. Courtney can compile a list of recommendations. I'm going to ask for a um, spot, uh, an item on the agenda next month so we can discuss it. And the goal would be to, you know, have all these revisions in a final hard copy and in place for uh, the new year. And this personnel policy, it's designed to avoid confusion. It's, it's a set of guidelines for the employees and an administrative handbook for the administrator. And uh, if, in this handbook, it does say uh, biannual evaluations, and you all um, <coughs> mull that over, and, and would you rather um, have the administrator do biannual or annual uh, evaluations. And, and I'm just going to suggest that the administrator go ahead and, and start evaluations in, in January and to uh, also include with that the uh, acknowledged statement from each employee that they've received and, and read this, this uh, policy. And all of that should go into their employee file. And, and do you have any input on that? No, I just wanted to let you know how that worked in the past is that each department head evaluates their department. The head of the water department would evaluate all his water employees, the sewer department, and the sewer employees. And then I turn around and I evaluate the department heads. And I always evaluate it. Okay. All right. So uh, that's all I have. Does anyone have any questions? And thank you all for listening. And I want to tell you all to have a beautiful and happy Thanksgiving. And uh, we're going to move on to staff reports. So I, I, I would like to ask the city administrator and the city clerk if they have anything they'd like to report. I don't at this time. Okay. Come in. Okay, thank you. And then Mr. Large with the note. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, brief report tonight. Um, the Avenue B resurfacing. Uh, that. that uh, project is nearing completion, however, the final striping is pending a meeting with the CRA board, which will be held on <coughs> November 17th. Um, we also have uh, road paving projects underway uh, that's actually for the CRA board at this time, those projects are under design. Um, separately, there are city road paving projects that we have a task order, I see it's on the agenda for tonight. And uh, lastly, um, we have a grant application for a new water well that was submitted uh, this, past, this past month, and we are awaiting a war notification at this time. So we'll monitor that and let you know if that project is awarded. Um, and that's all we have this evening. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Does anyone have any questions? Does, does the public have any questions? One question. Uh, Avenue B Southeast. Uh, are you still looking at the problems of the parking on that? Um, we're exactly We've had two, two, I think, and there's some more information that come in. Have you drafted anything on that? Yeah. Um, uh, closer to uh, Marine Street? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, we have. And uh, that that's part of what we'll be discussing on uh, at the CRA board meeting on the 17th. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, Ms. Tamara Allen with Waterfront Partnership. Good evening. Um, I think you gave half my report, so I'm just going to go real quick. That'll be good. Um, our environmental team members uh, worked with the Franklin County Board of Commissioners to pass a resolution this month for October being um, Native Florida Native Plant Month, and um, and also served as a guide, interpretive guide for the. We're getting a little beyond city limits here, but also um, a, an interpretive guide for the uh, St. George Island Plantation Homeowners Association. Did a wildflower tour, and um, we're 
thinking that that might be something that we could consider doing one year for Caribou when the wildflowers are really at their peak it might be something that we could consider because it is remarkably uh, a tourist attraction to people from all over the place even other states that come to see our our wildflowers and they've been particularly beautiful the last couple of years so we're looking at how can we make that an economic attraction for Caribou. Um, we have ongoing work on the management plan for McKissick and Jordan, McKissick Beach and Jordan Bayou, and uh, we are we have ongoing. Uh, in addition to uh, the commissioner, uh, the mayor, and Mr. Powell was meeting with um, Charlie Woods concerning that relationship. I've spent a good deal of time this month researching other than government, other than state or local government money that we could use to remove the derelict boats. Some of the oil companies like Amico have programs for derelict um, boat removal and I've been trying to trail, go down those trails. Um, so far I haven't found exactly the right thing, but I did consult with um, the Waterfront Partnership staff in, in Tallahassee and they suggested that we might use some of the um, Coastal Partnership <coughs> Initiative that comes through DEP for that possible purpose. It, um, but unfortunately, it just closed in October. So it'll be next August or so before that's available. So if we haven't found other funding to solve those boat problems by then, we certainly can put in a a grant for that and perhaps work with the CRA and trying to figure out how to leverage a little bit of their funds to do that. I don't believe, uh, now we're, you know, we can't really get much into CRA discussions, but that CRA cannot be used in the, in the uh, river, can it, Mr. Hartman? I believe that's outside of the boundaries. Mm -hmm. What about for boats that are derelict at the dock on the side of the river, like on the land? I mean, they're in the water, but... Yeah, I know what you're saying. Right. They're, they're abutting the, yeah. the boundary of the CRA. I can certainly look into it. Oh, because we have several that are stacked on top of one another. That They don't appear to be sinking as bad as they are because there's boats underneath them. So this has been an ongoing problem here for quite some time, as many of you probably know. Um, I think the... Um, the mayor did a nice job of reporting on our brownfield program. Uh, the engineers, uh, the other people that met with us were the two engineers that actually took the core samples out of the floor of the sugar shack and, and did the um, test well and gave us really the, their final report on what is stage two of the brownfield study that they've done and they found the petroleum um, contamination there in the ground and up to the sugar shack and it would it's really more cost effective to remove that building since it was it's it has no uh, that we're aware of we have not been able to determine any historical content for that building in terms of a reason to not tear it down it's a, it was built in the 80s it's a it's a uh, concrete block structure which is is not in itself a problem of I mean we have lots of historical buildings that are concrete structures but uh, this one was just uh, built as a storage place for the water works at the time so uh, it is turned out to be a lot more cost effective to just remove that building um, and have it and plus uh, they would pay to remove it and physically carry it off which is also a good thing so I um, that seems to be the next step and then in addition to that I've been in communication with the um, a program out of Tallahassee that is part of it's actually city of Tallahassee runs a regional brownfield program to get rid of asbestos and lead paint and we haven't been able to test that big building that's there, the, the waterworks building, to determine if we have lead paint and asbestos. So 
if we can qualify to get that done for free, that would be a real uh, good thing for us to do because before, even if we decided to renovate it or tear it down or anything, we'd still have to abate asbestos and lead paint. So we might as well let somebody else pay for that. That's been my theory all along about this project is we get other people to pay for it so, so that then the city can decide what it wants to do with the property. But those things are very slow moving. I've never seen anything quite so slow, but apparently engineering takes a lot of time. Um, but it does seem to be moving forward and we've got a lot of support at both the regional level from Atlanta and the statewide and local level for the Big Bend. Um, our community emergency response team members have been getting a lot of practice lately um, for the occasion of an emergency uh, in directing travel and people and managing parking. Uh, we, we participated uh, for the, the CERT team uh, did that for the Lantern Fest that was held at the Lighthouse last week, week before last, and uh, we'll be doing it again also um, managing uh, people movement at the Seafood Festival this weekend too. All that gives us experience in how to do these things in case of an emergency. And let's see. Also, the hours we put in doing that. Right. The, the hours that we put in qualify to get the grant from the state for the emergency management um, and, um, equipment that we're able to get and the um, everything from hard hats and flashlights to radios and such so that we can do our job better and we continue so we can continue to learn to do all of those things. Um, Skip covered the uh, waterfront partnerships involvement with uh, the holiday on the harbor and um, he we are still grateful to Mr. Hartman for his contribution to making Santa Claus be a very successful event this year, again, by giving us, uh, providing us with the candy canes to give the little children. And they are so grateful, and we're lucky this year we're also going to be able to give them books that were donated for that purpose from um, a local group in East Point, age-appropriate books for Christmas. And... Um, at, the, at our meeting, uh, we had our meeting on October 14th at the library. Uh, we had a long discussion about some of the um, activities that were in the original visioning plan. I don't know if you remember, but in 2007 and 8, the city got a grant from um, Waterfronts Partnership and was designated as a Waterfronts Partnership uh, community. But in that process, we had to do a visioning plan for implementation of, that, of, of the city's vision for the waterfront. And um, we had input from over 500 citizens of Carabelle, um, which is a pretty good percentage given um, how many people there are. But we had, we had a year of different ways of collecting input. And there was almost universal consensus that, that the Marine Street needs to have some sort of a working, a formal working waterfront that's um, a dock, a pier, um, the proper kind of structure for shrimp boats to tie up for repairs, for getting ice, for offloading um, shrimp or seafood or other things for um, small cruise ships to come here because we've had a couple come and they like this to come here and there's not really a sufficient public dock for them to come to. So um, that was one of the projects that had been uh, put together and actually submitted to the state for working waterfront funds back in, in 2008. So we are going to um, pull that back out of the vision plan because it was well founded in in those um, those activities that we did, both as an economic and also a public access um, activity, and write them up and and give them to you all for consideration 
when you get to the point of seeking possible Restore Act projects, that that might be um, one to consider and try to get some specifics and maybe get you a picture of what it might look like. And if you can think about the waterfront, the new waterfront dock area in Appalach that's there where they have so many public activities, but also on one end it's, it's um, a seafood company and they have, a, they rent spaces on the dock for shrimp boats, but they also have fuel and pump out and all the things that those uh, commercial boats might need, along with it being a place where people can sit and look at the, the shrimp boats and whatever. People, people come here from up north all the time and they're standing there by the, looking at the shrimp boat saying, is that a shrimp boat? You know, they're really, what we take for granted is being so regular. These people have come a long way to see a shrimp boat. So I, I hope that we can make a better place for them to um, see it. And then we, a place that we could have more um, other public activities, but a place that could be used for commercial um, dockage because you know the, the the dockage down by the um, pavilion and on down there is can't be used for commercial. It can only be used for recreational activities. That's a restriction in the land uh, usage from Florida forever. So um, that is my entire report for this month. And I give, I've given you a copy. And if you have any questions, I'm glad to answer them. Otherwise, does anyone have questions? Okay, any questions from the public? I do have one question. I have a question of the commissioner. When is the point of distribution training that's going to be here in Caravelle? December 15th. December 15th. Okay, so we can announce that at the next meeting, but there will be uh, the emergency management folks are doing a point of distribution training here, which is what you would have, for example, if we had a hurricane and we had no ice and no water, and they, we were having to get trucks of ice and water, or maybe food or whatever down here. That would be how that might be organized here at City Hall and how various community volunteers could get involved as well as the CERT team. So we would invite anyone who's interested in helping to figure out how we would best do that to come participate in that meeting. I believe Courtney's in charge of that as I Call. What are, thank you for announcing that. I've attended that before. It's interesting. Uh, what are the hours of that? It's going to be, I think it's from 9 to 12. Oh, okay. Or 8 to 12. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Tamara. Okay. We're going to move up. Excuse me. I see the EDC gentleman is here, Mr. David Butler, and it appears he has a report. Hi, so thank you, sir. <coughs> very small. No, no written report and very little to say. Um, we did get a request to give a letter of support to the Big Bend Sink Byway, uh, putting in grants to get funds to republish um, material that includes the new things we've added to the byway. And I sent that out and got feedback from Mel Kelly and sent it on. I'll send the final copy back to the city. The other thing is I got an email reference fracking. I don't know if it's come up. We, I did. I just okay. reported it. Where you, did you know that the um, county commission yes, yes. passed that? So we don't right. need to address that here. I was told the county commission. Good. Okay. I didn't think of be moving that fast, but I guess things like that do move fast. Thank you. That's it. Okay, and I, I just want to uh, mention to you that uh, Dale Suggs, uh, he's the president of the Big Ben Scene Byway. Yes. Uh, Mr. Kirk Blair of the TDC is going to request him to come and talk with the TDC and give us an update, uh, those board members, an update on where uh, the informational kiosk are. Sure. Uh, you know, where, where they're progressing, how it's moving along. And I'll try to remember to let you know when that is so you can come and attend. All right. And if you want to have that for the city, we can do that as well. Thank you so much. And then uh, Mr. Hartman, our attorney, do you have anything to report to us? I do not. Okay. All right. So I guess we'll move on to new business, and that is Golf on Man Systems Center has a presentation and request. 
for um, the possible action concerning the possibility of expanding the Gulf of Man System Center current lease with approximately five acres of city property. Meeting uh, Mayor of La Paz and City Commissioners. I'm Mark Milliken, the President of the Gulf Unmanned Systems Center located here in Carabell. Joining me here tonight are the owners and CEO of Gulf Unmanned Systems Center, Bruce and Cheryl McCormick, our Senior Vice President, Maria Peterson, our partner from Florida State University, Dr. Emmanuel Collins, who chairs the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Florida State University, and is FSU's Director of the Center for Intelligent Systems Control and Robotics, better known as CASCOR. I am here as the President of the Gulf Unmanned Systems Center asking you for access and usage of a small piece of unused land plotted approximately five acres inside the partial C of the chart picture. This is this part right here. This piece of property is northeast of our present lease acreage and building and needed to build a robust and challenging test track for the testing and evaluation of unmanned ground platforms and vehicles and analyzing the data from, from those tests. The acreage presently leased to Gulf Unmanned System Center is not adequate to build such a robust test track. Please look at slide two. You can see from this slide these are the mobility challenges that we've drafted out to put into this area. It's gravel, water crossings, ruts, sand, steep hills, pile of vegetation, dust and soil, logs, grass, and rocks to a continuous track. Now look at slide three for the special features required by the test track. Track features, ability to wet any of the track sections, well-characterized terrains, high fidelity maps of the track, temperature, humidity, soil, moisture, and wind monitoring along the track, and landmarks throughout the track for the purpose of accurately localizing of the vehicles while on the track. What we have access and usage of now is simply not large enough, nor is it have the correct frame features needed. Please look at slide four. You can see that we need mud patches, rocks, logs, ruts, water crossing, and sand required for scientific testing. Why robotic, robotic test track? Intelligent mobile ground platforms coming out of industry and academia are being validated by researchers under dissimilar conditions, making head-to-head -head comparisons impossible. Existing test sites are geared toward single-sized vehicles, and available test sites at universities and companies have a very limited set of mobility challenges and are available to researchers under very restrictive policies and are expensive. Gulf Unmanned Systems Center and Florida State University would like to secure access and usage for the additional unused five acres northeast east of our present lease so that Florida State University and specifically their Center for Intelligence Systems, Control, and Robotics can start seeking the grants and funding in order to work with us, Gulf Unmanned Systems Center, and the city 
in building a test track with the required features shown and discussed earlier. Building this test track with the features described would not be permanent. It could be restored to its original features with adequate notice if required for future use by the city. Our vision is the users of this test facility will be provided with a couple of small scale and ATV sized unmanned robotic platforms suitable for the designated track. And this test track will serve as a host for a diverse robotic com com competitors and competition. Different groups will be offered the same vehicle to test their intelligent mobility algorithms or bring their own platforms to test. This would be under the safety policies and direction of Gulf Unmanned Systems Center and FSU Cusco. With FSU as our partner and with the Commission's approval, our mission is to have this test track start producing revenue in two years after all required grooming and feature building is complete and security and storage concerns have been met and paid for. If you grant Gulf Unmanned Systems Center and Florida State University this access and usage, and once funding is in place and the building of the test track commences, we, Gulf Unmanned Systems Center, Florida State University, along with you, the city, and your economic development committee, can start marking the capabilities to other robotic programs at other universities, colleges, private and commercial industries, state, federal, and Department of Defense entities. Gulf Online Systems Center and FSU Center for Intelligent Systems Control and Robotics would like to request a commitment and document from this commission granting sole usage of these additional five acres for 10 years with the option of discussing additional five years of usage in the not too good distant future. This is so that Florida State University can move forward in securing the added grants and funding. Thank you for the time this evening to present this opportunity to you, Mayor, the City of Caravel, and this commission. Thank you. Do uh, you have any questions now? I have a couple. Um, <coughs> this is unused property that belongs to the city. Has there been any other interest of that property from anybody else? Not at this time. Not at this time. And I understand that you'll go in there and put the rocks and the logs for the test track, and so you'll be developing the property as a track. As a test Sort of like building a mud, mud box. Exactly. Yeah, we got one north of town. I know that, sir. <laughs> we need more than just mud, sir. But, but they got drivers in them. Now, this is going to be robotic, so yes, I sir. assume that we're going to deal with the uh, drones control of these? How is no, this no, sir, this is controlled? land and ground vehicles only, not airborne drones. Uh -huh. On this one. It has nothing to do with aviation or above sea level. Okay, definitely. But as, as Commissioner okay. Allen asked, uh, will this be uh, robotic controlled or are you going to have uh, any, uh, will there be humans driving? You know, I, I do fear. Both. Uh, okay, so you, it could be it could be looked at as a possible mud bog then, possibly. Can, can the public, would the public view it as, as that? I mean, I don't want it to. I don't want it to appear. I don't want a mud bog developed out there. Can no, ma'am. This okay. would have. We put up fencing around it, security-wise. You know, we did defined features built specifically for those testing. It'd well, be on that. Okay. Why would why would if it's if it's unmanned? Why why would humans be operating a the vehicle? There, there's always people. that humans have to be in the loop, ma'am, for safety. Always have the on-off switch so that a human can turn off the system. <laughs> This would be like something that would uh, go over terrain to remove a bomb or yes, sir. Something. Counter. So there would be no person in the in the machine. That's correct. But if a person monitoring or driving it from either tethered or from yeah. remote control through the airway. So it'd be controlled with a yes, door sir. stick or something. Like something. Yes, sir. Okay. I have a question. Then you mentioned that uh, uh, FSU would be seeking out grant funding to to build this track. Yes, ma'am. Um, grants always come with, uh, you know, strings. Will there be special criteria to this grant funding? Is there going to be any restrictions to the property, to the land, long term? Just like I talked about, the Brownsville cleanup had special restrictions to it. Um, I don't think so at this time, ma'am. But I, there's more when we get in with uh, Florida State University and seeking the grants. We'll provide those to you in the funding that might be required for those. But 
but that is the funding that you would be using or depending on to start building this, this track in, in, in the next two years. Yes, so you're asking us to grant you the, uh, the property unknowing what the restrictions, what long-term restrictions may be on it in the future. Yes, ma'am, it's not being used at this time. Yes, but we don't know, you know, what the future holds for that, that location. That's our only uh, industrial area in the city no, limits. No, ma'am, we're not asking for the industrial area. We're, we're asking for the southwest corner of Parcel C, which is just northeast of us, and actually the industrial area that you have graded out is beyond that dirt road, ma'am. We'd be south of that dirt road, but we'd not infringe on that whatsoever. It would be fenced, so there wouldn't be in that, ma'am. There could be any noise involved? There could be, yes, sir. But we restrict that to daylight only. Mm -hmm. And if there was nighttime testing required, we'd surely put it before uh, the commission here and, uh, and the mayor that we'd like to use it at certain certain hours. But it, I think it's far enough removed that you probably would not hear uh, much of the noise uh, uh, beyond what you have right now, sir. And these robotic mechanisms that I guess we could work for is uh, are, are they come from the universities and their engineering department is on the same? Yes sir unless it's commercial and then a commercial one could, could build them and bring them down to test them. And other so, people from other places could then yes, sir. contract with you. Yes sir and that would contract us for, for, a fee. Some, for, for a fee and some of that revenue would come back to the uh, to the city uh, along those along with people coming here to spend a week at a time eating here and, and uh, looking at this area. So. so are you requesting this to be just uh, attached to your your uh, lease now that's uh, ten dollars a year from the city? Yes sir, yes ma'am. Uh, and is that, is that I, I think I asked you, was, is that property completely prop, uh, tax exempt? That yeah. property? Mm -hmm. So the GUSC pays no uh, ad valorem? And I believe you are correct, that, that entire piece is sold industry. Okay. And uh, do they pay, um, we may not know this offhand, water management district uh, taxes or school board taxes out there? Is it completely you exempt? Aware of oh. completely exempt. Uh, and um, well, the city is the owner, so it's city yes. property. Okay. And you do have some uh, ponds, it looks like, on that property? Yeah, yes, uh, it's a little bit, like I said, that's a, a rough depiction on slide two there. Doesn't necessarily say we take it to that wetland or that lake. We probably move it north of that to put our to put our wetlands in there because we don't want to uh, disturb that uh, that part of that lake on there. And you go against any kind of input into that. Yes, sir. I saw one of the things to deal with uh, how to drive on black ice. I think we could explain to anybody around here what that is. Um, let's see, uh, north of Mason Dixon line, they have black ice. We actually took that out. That is something that would have the same type of physical uh, capabilities of black ice, but it wouldn't be physical black ice. We'd use it in some kind of friction or something that would look like or actually would uh, replicate black ice, so it wouldn't be cold. I know what black ice yes, is. <laughs> but it happened when it had the same thing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's all I have. Well, I, you know, we, we, we recognize that GUSC is a uh, Gulf Unmanned System Center, certainly an important addition to Carabelle's economy. We do. Uh, through employment and uh, purchase of downtown property and, and um, bring potential clients into the city and uh, we, we appreciate your willingness willingness to work with the city um, and helping us understand this proposed project um, you know does anyone else have questions or input on this uh, my main concern uh, would be uh, unknown uh, restrictions long-term restrictions to the land or any special grant criteria that's that's attached to to the funding that would be my my main concern and then you're uh, requesting it for how many years? Did Ten you years, ma'am, with possibility of coming back and talk to you in the near future for another five years. Mm -hmm. And in the event that you, you end the project, then you would remove all right, We would restore it. Nothing's permanent there. Restore it to what it looks like today. I, um, I think I, I, would, I would 
have some questions for the attorney. I would be, uh, you know, I, I, I just, uh, if there was a, a failure of the, of, you know, your, this is a new startup company, and if there was failure of the company or um, wanting to sell the company, um, you know, would this, would this property go, in, uh, go with the original lease? Uh, if they wanted to lease the co company out or at least the property, you know, to another business, a uh, one-man system business. What, what my understanding is, is that what this would be would be a lease amendment, an amendment of the lease mm -hmm. that we already have. The terms of that, the existing terms of the lease would apply, as well as any new terms, that we, which would include the expansion, potentially expansion of the area and the use of the property. As far as the concern over any restrictions, I think we have this in the existing lease, but things like um, we, can, we can detail in there that, that no restrictions on of certain types, but they say clouds of title, any restrictions, we can restrict those. That might make it harder for FSU or whoever is applying for grants. When they're applying for the grant, they would, I would assume, have to show possession and control of that property. They would do that by providing a copy of the lease and the lease amendment. And if the grant provider had, for instance, restrictions that are not consistent with that lease document, that's on them. It does not apply to us. I mean, whatever our contract is, it's our, we own the property. The lease that we have with the person in possession of the property is what it is. The grant would not modify that. Grant, I would assume they would work directly with the grant provider if they have a problem with the form of the lease, and they would come, come back before us and say, hey, can you please lighten up this restriction or that restriction, and then it would be up to us to decide if we are willing to do that or not. But if most of the time the lease, again, takes preeminence over, and again, grant, just simply we're not the applicant for the grant, the, the, the company would you would be, and they cannot unilaterally alter our property rights. Okay, now I don't understand how um, the city owns the property, GUSC is leasing the property, how, do, how can the FSU apply for the grant if the FSU has no, uh, if FSU, FSU doesn't hold the lease or, or the property, how does, how, how does that work? I can think of a couple different ways, but that's up to them. Mm -hmm. Meaning whatever relationship whether it be contractual or otherwise. Yes, ma'am. Are you intending to lease this out, you know, long term or on a year, a yearly basis? We're not or leasing to anybody. Uh -huh. We're going to build it. That's going to be part of Gulf on Main Street. You're also stop leasing that. that no, no, sir, not whatsoever. What we're doing is working with Florida State University that needs such a track mm -hmm. for their internal lease right now, and then go out and market that outside of that for the betterment of the whole community. Mm -hmm. is, is what is what our plan is and our vision. So you're actually using, uh, building a facility that you would rent out or charge, you know, for them to use and demonstrate their equipment. Yes, sir. I have one other question, spoken of the lease. I guess I assume we're, everybody's on tar target with the lease agreement and employees, and would this bring in any new employees? Yes, sir. Uh, can you give the estimate of how many it would take? Um, I'd hate to do that, sir. <laughs> I don't know how, how much it's going to take. I'm not a land mover or lift logs along those lines, sir. I can't say that. I would, uh, you please would have don't to contract want, people uh, bring this stuff in, though. Yeah. Well, but we use locals that we can use to, in their towns yeah, to help us build this. Yes. That's always our priority, sir. Okay.
then Commissioner Walden. Now, Mr. Commissioner Mathis has set in on the original no negotiations on the, on the lease. You're, you're familiar from, from the beginning, from day one. And then, uh, were you, uh, you were here in the beginning when GUSC yes. first came. Now, were, did you participate in the lease uh, negotiations or anything? No. Have I'm you had an opportunity to review the I reviewed the lease and uh, I, have, I have a copy of it right here in the amendment and also have a copy of the old lease at home. And uh, I thought there were some problems with interpreting some of the language in the old lease that was uh, uh, in a way used to cure the lease. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's water under the bridge, yes. so to speak. So, but uh, though that language that was in that that I felt was ambiguous, uh, it's not in the new lease at that time. So we're okay with that. We worked hard on that new one. Yeah. <laughs> do we uh, want? Do you think you want? I to think uh, if, if the attorneys could do a draft of the kind of thing we're talking about, is it work with them? What do we do? Yeah, well, two two options is one would be that if they provide some, that Gussie mm -hmm. provides some detail on the lease terms that they would like, I can put together a draft amendment and before the next meeting, and then before the next meeting, if they kind of get, get their wheels under them on going out there, checking it out, um, we would have then something to look at on, on paper mm -hmm. that would just be, again, an amendment and we can talk about the terms we like, we don't like, that will work, won't work, what changes we can make, that sort of thing. As far as I'm concerned, they've been a good neighbor mm -hmm. for the city, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's well worth uh, looking into. It is. It's a very interesting project. project. We're proud to have you here. You know, don't. I, I would invite, especially the new commissioners, if they'd like uh, to come over and visit us, either one on one or as a group, we'd be more than glad to sit down. Tell you more about us since you're since you're here. Okay, one on one. Okay, one on one. It shows you how to understand it. But be more than glad to have them uh, come over, spend an hour with us, and we'd explain what we're doing and what our vision is in, in building this uh, on-demand system center and why Caraval was the perfect place for us. In August and October, I, I did meet with the GUSC. Uh, Mr. Uh, McCormick and Mr. M M M Mill Milliken. Milliken. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, for uh, three hours and then two hours again, and you weren't at the second meeting. Oh, um, and then I had been on a, a tour out, I believe it was last summer of 14 on, their, on the building, and they have really cleaned that building up. They've done a, a fine uh, uh, job on that. Uh, you wouldn't recognize it on the inside compared to what it was in, in the beginning when we were discussing the original lease. So, I, you know, I if you get a chance to go out there, it's a good opportunity to, to tour that building. You don't, you know, often get inside there. And then, then you know, they can go over ahead and show you around on the outside. So uh, can, can we uh, table this? Is that what you would call it? Um, we just table it, Mr. Hartman? Or, or if you all, and if, if what I suggested is you all just would direct me to obtain terms, I will, of course, put them together in some, not some document, a lease amendment document for y'all for your mm -hmm. review. At Look least. into to see what the city's obligations and liabilities would be in yep. this. And, uh, Again, I understand I mean, what I'm getting from the commission is we want to make sure that any grants obtained, any funding obtained does not impair just our rights as an owner mm -hmm. in, in the property. Um, at the same time, obviously, I'll hear from both of main systems as to the terms of the lease, this Ten-year, five-year uh, renewals on certain terms, that sort of stuff. Obviously, the, the talk about if there's a um, if they want to surrender the lease or terminate the lease or anything else, what they will their obligations to restore it to the condition it's in now, or original condition, that all that stuff I can okay. list it all out. Do what terms did. All right. So we certainly don't. I don't want a cloud a cloud put on the property because of any any financing. Um, and, and then maybe we could also address the issue, uh, environmental issue, you know, with the, the little uh, the wetlands here and uh, any kind of noise pollution, and, and, you know, anything like that. You know, one of, there's, there's neighborhoods in that area, you know, McKissick Beach, and, and then there's a, a new uh, developed subdivision right there at the, at the uh, entrance to Airport Road. And, you know, we don't know what the future holds. We may have some development coming and we don't want to 
upset neighbors. We'd love to help you with the development. It's okay, that would be great. Uh, 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 just one more, one more question. Yes, sir. Uh, do you know how many employees you have on staff right now? Right now we have uh, 11 on staff. 11 on staff. Right. And a 12th <clears> one <throat> just moved, excuse me, 12th one just moved here from Panama City on 5 October. Uh -huh. Okay. Well, whatever you said, Dan, I moved that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Do you uh, have if you a, need a motion? Let's see, Mr. Walden, Commissioner Walden, is there a number? Or do you have a number that Commissioner Walden can, can Sure, I'll, I'll provide it to him. Okay. And, and do you want, if you want to go out, I'm, I'm sure you can find your way. And <laughs> you've been there before. <laughs> do you have have their number? You can get in touch with them if you want to go out for a tour. Yeah, I'd like, uh, okay. yeah. It's a good opportunity. Yeah. So uh, uh, we have a motion then by, are we, we're tabling this? Or, or just a, um, it's actually what, what the direction of me would be, do you want me just a motion to simply draft a proposed lease amendment or do you think? This comes under due diligence. Yep. Okay. I can just do a real a draft one, I can put an option in there on the thing. Just okay. see what's involved and what our, yep. what our responsibilities. All right, so then we have a, a motion by Commissioner Allen uh, to uh, direct the city attorney to draft a lease amendment and to conduct some due diligence on um, all of the items that we've just discussed here. Do, do we have a second? A second. Okay. Uh, all approved? Um, all approved. Okay, and any opposed? Is there any discussion or questions? Any discussion or questions from the public? Okay, then the motion carries. Okay, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, then uh, item two, discussion and possible action regarding city road resurfacing projects and uh, the Inovia task order for engineering on these road resurfacing projects. Um, I'll just oh, come on up. I, I, I'll just try to go ahead and tell you real quick. Uh, uh, the county received five bids, and I, I could tell you uh, the last three. Uh, the bids were in bulk uh, for pricing, like per square yard or cubic yard on the asphalt, bulk on what striking costs, drains, costs, curbs, gutters, signage, you know, basically anything. You know what I'm talking about, anything to build a road. Um, they're going to the County commissioners are going to award the bid on November the 16th at 5 p.m. I'll try to go there and, and uh, hear uh, the uh, lowest bidder was C.W. Roberts. Next lowest was Roberts and Roberts, and the next was P.B. and Son. Um, uh, I talked with Mr. Smallwood at Prepper, with Prepper Rich, and he said as soon as he gets the uh, um, approval from the county commissions, uh, commissioners who they're going to use. He'll send you the info uh, on all the, all the bid info. And then what, what, we, what is happening is that uh, the city is, is piggybacking on uh, county paving projects and piggybacking with the contractor that the county uh, has, is going to contract with uh, for asphalting uh, this entire list of uh, streets throughout the county and then Caravelle's uh, list of streets is here. Um, so, I mean, it looked to me like you could say maybe $30, I don't know, Does, is it measured in square uh, square yard or cubic yard on the asphalt? How well, do they do that? It's measured in a number of ways. Okay. Uh, per ton, per square yard. Okay. Well, he showed me that you know there, there's a significant savings if we piggyback on with the, with the county. I would agree with that. Okay. Um, so, but we have to have someone engineer each each uh, street project, uh, uh, you know, to let the um, contractor, the asphalters, know exactly how long it is, if there's going to be drains involved, or how much striping, or you know exactly what. So uh, Russell's put together a task order to do uh, the streets that we have proposed, and uh, we just uh, we need a motion. I thought I had a copy of it with me. I believe I do. Here, did, did you, uh, Courtney sent that out, or Keisha did with the. Uh, so did you all see that uh, task order? And uh, from uh, after he um, gets the bid information from the county, 
or from Preble Bridge, and you'll put together what it's going to cost for each uh, street. Is that correct? That's correct. Man. We'll provide them with the plans and uh, the quantities for each of those payouts that you just mentioned. Well, what we'll need to know, know because we this is being funded through our local option gasoline fund, so we'll need to know the cost of each street and and your task order so that we know what streets we can so you know right. what streets and, we and can we would, fund. Right, and we would coordinate that, and we would do it per street, and we would get um, a price from their so the contractor uh, per street for each of those quantities. So we will have a uh, we'll have a change order. Um, dollar amount for each 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 street segment, so that way you can approve it. So, um, if he gets you that information, say on the 16th or 18th, can you have the can you report back to us on the 3rd of December? Is that too early? Should we shoot for January? Um, what it might so we can let you know what streets we can afford to do. Understood. Um, that might be a little tight. In fact, I, I'm I'm sure it is. Okay. So I think we should fine. say January. Okay. So uh, then we need a, uh, if, if you all approve, it's a pleasure of the board, if we, uh, you know, we need to go ahead and get a motion to approve uh, the Novia's task order to start working on these projects. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion by uh, Commissioner Cal Allen and a second by Commissioner Mathis to approve Benovia's task order that he submitted for our city road paving projects. Um, all in favor? Uh, all opposed? Okay. All right. Thank so you. the motion carries. Thank you. And then the last item on our agenda is the appointment for the Restore Act Board. Um, I just want to let you know that the uh, county commissioners have dissolved the original <coughs> Restore Act Council and they are creating a new streamlined uh, council board consisting of five appointees from the county and one representative from each city commission. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and throw my hat in up front. I have a strong interest in participating in this board. It's, a, it's a, an important issue and uh, an important position for Carabelle. It has the potential to bring a lot of money for projects to our city. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm probably the most qualified candidate. Uh, I sat on the original Restore Act Council, um, and I was have been present at a lot of the uh, Franklin County uh, Commission meetings when, when these were discussed. I was present on, on this past Tuesday when Dewberry Associates presented their outline for creation of the comprehensive 15-year, multi-year implementation plan, which is required by the U.S. Treasury. Uh, some of y'all may not know that the county commissioners have contracted with uh, Dewberry uh, consultants. Um, they're from Ohio, somewhere up north. They are doing, preparing this 15-year multi-plan for five of the eight affected counties. Um, and the uh, members on the board, to really be effective, they're going to, they will make their recommendations to the council, uh, to the co county commissioners, who will then uh, work with the Dewberry consultants on developing this plan. Uh, the plan is similar, uh, but not as, as small as our CRA plan, but, you know, it's, it's the same thing. You're <coughs> going to have to have a plan, you're going to have to have uh, goals, objectives, projects are going to have to be listed in that plan. And uh, the U.S. Treasury is not going to fund any Restore Act projects until that plan is submitted. And the plan, uh, according to Dewberry uh, consultants, uh, can always be amended. It's going to it's a, similar to our CRA plan, can be amended. It's a living document, but it just has to be something that shows that the county is, is uh, diligently preparing to spend these uh, Restore Act funds in a proper manner. It's 23 million, it's gonna uh, work out to be about 2 million a year over 15 years, it's not a lot of money, but if uh, you can take some of these uh, other grant fundings that we, we look at, uh, like um, community development block grants or uh, even CRA money, um, grants from the Appalachian Regional Planning Council, you can leverage that money with some of these uh, the CR, uh, this Restore Act funds and, and really come out with a big project. And that's that's what they suggest to do. So, um, does anyone else have something to say? I'll let someone. Well, let's let's cut to the chase. Um, okay. 
Um, you were also the <coughs> representative of the district, the Williams district, and uh, and you've been involved in that before, so I just go ahead and nominate you to do that. Okay. No All right. Second. Okay. Thank you. So we have a, a motion and uh, by Mr. Commissioner Cal Allen and a second by Commissioner uh, Mathis uh, to appoint uh, myself to the new uh, newly formed Restore Act Board. Um, is there any discussion or questions? From the One public? question: Would there be any backup? Do you need a backup person? They have you? not. They have not discussed that. They're just now creating this. this thing. Okay. Any other questions or discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh -huh. okay. uh, any opposed? All right. So <coughs> the motion carries. So uh, before we move forward, I just want to discuss uh, one issue. I, uh, this is an, an extra duty for me. I sit on a handful of boards uh, throughout the, the county. I also represent both uh, municipalities on the Appalachia Regional Planning Council. Um, uh, have been for two years, um, and uh, it's a, it's a it's a was a good opportunity. I learned about uh, the nine uh, counties in this region that are on this board, but I would like to now defer my responsibilities of that uh, sitting on that board of directors to another commissioner, and hopefully a commissioner from this board. The um, that that appointment is done by the Franklin County Board of County Commissioners. But uh, if we can uh, come up with a member on this board that would, would like to replace me, I will go to the next county commission meeting and make that recommendation and make that request to be relieved of that duty and recommendation. Well, since there are my other commission term, I served as that position with the, the RPC, then I'd be glad to volunteer for that if, if, if you would want. Okay, do we, do we have a motion for that? Do, can we, uh, is there any other discussion? Cowles, uh, you interested in this guy? Yes. I'll make, I'll make a motion. Okay. And I'll yes. second that okay. motion. All right, so uh, what we'll do then is um, Commissioner Walden has motioned um, for me to go to the county, Franklin County Board of County Commissioners and uh, ask to be relieved of my duties and to ask uh, them to appoint Commissioner Cal Allen, we have a second by Commissioner Mathis. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Any, any opposed? Okay, so that, that motion carries, and I'll do that at their next meeting on November 16th. <coughs> that, that meeting has changed. They're not going to have the regular Tuesday meeting. It's the 16th at uh, Monday evening at 5 p.m. So uh, can we get approval of the attorney's uh, bills? Make a motion to approve the attorney bills. All right. I'll say that. Okay. We have a motion by Commissioner Mathis, second by uh, Commissioner Walden. Is there any discussion or questions? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so motion carries. Uh, is there any other discussion or comment from the public? All right, then we thank you. And can I get a motion to? Motion uh, sure. All right, thank you, sir. Second. All right, we have uh, one motion by Commissioner Allen and two seconds by Commissioners Walden and Mathis, and we're adjourned. Thank you very much.